golf is one of those sports where the personality of the player really takes center stage. It is an individualized game, after all. All eyes are on the one player, where each move is scrutinized and criticized. For example, just the name Phil Mickelson conjures up images of him as a family man, but on the flip side, let's take a look at some of the most controversial personalities in golf. First up, the most famous of them all, Tiger Woods. We're all aware why he's controversial, but what's worse is we kinda didn't notice at first, because he was so good at the game. But it's not so hidden anymore. He is controlling, secretive, and doesn't really care about what impact his actions have on other people. The man is a classic example of narcissistic behavior. He famously cheated on his wife, Ellen Nordgren, back in 2009 with a New York nightclub manager, Rachel Uchitel. Up next is golfer turned commentator, Johnny Miller. One thing is certain, he sure is fearless. When he speaks, he tells it like it is, whether it's right or not is a whole different thing. But the thing is, what he thinks and says is often controversial and mostly inappropriate. During the 2008 US Open, Miller said some pretty terrible things about Rocco Mediate. The comments were racist to say the least and definitely out of line. On another occasion, he body shamed Rory McIlroy and these are just two examples, not to mention Donald Trump. We don't even have to explain this one, he's one of the most recognizable names when it comes to course ownership. Sure, he has very deep pockets, but it seems like his projects have never really come to fruition in the way that he believes. He doesn't own any of the top 10 golf courses, although he thinks his courses are the best anywhere in the world. Honestly, it's great that he's pumping all this money into the game. We hope his recent purchases as well as the Doral get better reviews from the the people who aren't being paid by him. Now, let's look at Sergio Garcia. Gotta admit, no matter if you love him or hate him, you do end up feeling bad for him in some way. He was once touted as the one to take on Tiger Woods, but that never really happened. But now, he's better known for his antics on the course. Remember the re-gripping issue at Bethpage? And him spitting in the cup because of his seriously terrible putting? But he did end up taking time off from the game back in 2008 to find himself. Up next is is Bobby Jones. Controversial, but not in a bad way. We automatically assume that controversy must be a bad thing, but not in the case of Jones. He decided to quit right when he was at the top of his game. He was doing better than anyone else at the game, and he gave it up, just like that. Some said it was for his family, but we'll never really know. Not to mention Pat Perez with the terrible tantrums. Perez was known as a man who always expected more from himself than he was even capable of. He was also quite inconsiderate of others. He famously threw a tantrum after he finished second at the Reno Tahoe Open. Clearly, he didn't think it would be on film. There was also the time when he hit the ball in the gallery area and nearly hit someone on the head. Instead of apologizing himself, he made his caddy do it instead. Coming up, John Daly. Well, he was always a legend on the course. His wins were often overshadowed by his antics. This included hitting a ball off a beer can, playing a round of golf without his shirt, and hitting up the Hooters tent during a race delay. Daly was known for all the most ridiculous things. Let's not forget Steve Williams, the Kiwi caddy. He was Tiger Woods' caddy from 1999 to 2011. He often went to ridiculous lengths to protect his player, even if it meant breaking a camera. He was yelling at cameramen, lashing out in a newspaper article about Phil Mickelson, or writing books and giving interviews. Williams had a terrible thing for grabbing the spotlight and making headlines, but he famously turned on to Woods too, and that's pretty shocking. Coming up, Hank Haney he seemed like the nicest golf instructor. The guy was always smiling and always seemed so happy and sincere, but of course, that was only until he and Woods broke up and he realized he hadn't signed a contract. But he did make a lot of money off the book he wrote about his time with Woods. On May 30th, 2019, Haney was suspended from his PGA Tour show on Sirius XM Radio after he made some racist and sexist comments he made on air about the LPGA. Then, there was the brash TV announcer Dottie Pepper. She famously celebrated Laura Davies missing a putt when she was on the U.S. golf team and went on to say that she didn't really care what everyone thought. She also referred to the U.S. team as a bunch of choking, freaking dogs during the Solheim Cup and then she realized she was on the air. Talk about learning to keep your mouth shut. Not our Dottie. Another one with no control over what she's saying, Kelly Tilgum. All it took was a single comment for Tilgum to be taken to task by her peers in the media. Talking about a player's feelings towards Woods, she said, quote, Lynn him in a back alley. Yep, she actually said that. She did say that she didn't mean it, but those are some strong words. 
Tours. Up next, Rory Sabatini is one of the worst. One of the PGA Tours most disrespectful players in history, he made no effort to hide his conflict with his peers when playing with Ben Crane. Sabatini walked to the next tee before Crane even hit a putt because he thought that his slow play was damaging his own game. At another tournament, Sabatini moved on to scolding young volunteers trying to help him find a lost ball. Up next, Michelle Y isn't really a bad apple, but we think she's too young to have been playing professional golf for six years. She's just 22 years old. She wasn't even 16 when she went pro. The LPGA is more flexible on these things. You're more likely to find a young girl in the LPGA than a young boy in the PGA. Shouldn't graduating high school be a necessity before you go? We think so. Another similar case is that of Alexis Thompson. She also started way too early on the LPGA. After all, she could turn pro after a few years. At the age of 12, she became the youngest golfer ever to qualify to play in the US Women's Open. She went professional in June 2010 at age 15, even younger than Michelle Wee. Now, let's get back to another badly behaved golfer, Bubba Watson. Even though he was better known for his long tees and that pink shafted driver, Watson also had a track record for saying all the wrong things. Once while playing on the European tour, he said that the tournament was poorly organized and that's what caused him to play poorly. Sounds like a lame excuse to us. He earned quite a reputation for the work that he took to make it to the winner's circle. He was also open about substance abuse and he should get some credit for being so open about his experience. It raised issues about this character, and many were just turned off that he was abusing drugs. Not to mention, golf administrator Tim Fincham. He served as the commissioner of the PGA Tour from 1994 to 2016, and although the game blossomed under his leadership, he doesn't escape criticism. He was called out for the length of the season, the FedEx Cup setup, the number of events played every week, and even the qualification process. Let's not forget Ben Hogan. Best known for being one of the first modern golf swings, he came with a fairly controversial personality. While on the course, he was very antisocial, much like Woods in his early years. This led many to believe that Hogan wasn't the type of person you want to know, but that wasn't the case. He's actually a great guy and a fighter, as he showed after his accident. There's also Ben Crane, the most deliberate golfer out there. He didn't even try to hide his slow play or even explain why it was so. The problem is that this is exactly the kind of thing that people complain about for golf to be shown on television. Not that we could change the game because people have short attention spans, but Crane could definitely come up with a more efficient route. Finally, at number one, it's Augusta National, the home of the Masters. So this isn't a person, but an organization made up of people. We all love the Masters. It's a wonderful tournament, but the host course is known for its strict rules. The media has limited access to players, and fans are called patrons. It's only allowed women to become members in 2012. That's a wrap for this video. Which of these golf personalities do you think is the most controversial? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos just like this. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.